classical piece I'm playing is Lagrima, one of the shortest, most beautiful pieces for classical guitar. Lagrima was written by Francisco Tarrega, a Spanish composer born in 1852. Now, Tarrega injured his eyes when he was a kid, so his family thought he would become blind. Now, back then, the only few jobs that you could do as a blind person was playing and teaching music. So his father decided that he would learn how to play music so that at least he would be able to make a living if ever blind. Now, the injuries never made him blind and he turned out to become one of the greatest classical guitar players of all time. In this video, I'll walk you through this beautiful piece. We're going to analyze it and break it down so that we can really understand the chord progression and the melody, but also how it was arranged. Two things really important. I have two more videos like this one in which we talk about the canon in D and Spanish romance. So make sure that you check them out. I'm gonna leave the link in the description down below. Second thing, guys, if you are into ukulele, I just recently opened a ukulele channel called Marco Cirillo Ukulele. It's a new channel, so there are only just a couple of videos, but make sure that you subscribe if you like the ukulele, because we will be putting out more videos soon. Now let's get started with this beautiful piece, Lagrima. Lagrima is a romantic prelude and it means teardrop in Spanish. It's only 16 bars long, but there are two different sections. The A section in E major, and the B section in E minor. The structure is A, A, B, B, A, meaning we repeat the A section twice, the B section twice, and then we go back to the A section. So the whole thing is 16 bars, takes about 45 seconds to play, but with the repetition, it's probably around a couple of minutes. Now, one of the things that I love about Lagrima is that Tarega was able to really come up with a simple melody. And then he harmonized this melody with a much simpler accompaniment. Yet the music is so beautiful and it tells a beautiful story. Now, the melody is this one. So in the A section, D melody is mainly played on the E string. It's very simple. And then he uses a set of enchanting chords to harmonize it. We have the E major, F sharp minor, and the E over G sharp. And then we'll go back to the B7 chord. We can then add the B string open to add even more color to the chords. So for each chord that we are playing, we would alternate the B string open. And the B7 is slightly different. Now, the next section has a beautiful and mesmerizing chord progression and a beautiful melody. It sounds like this. The chords are also very simple. We have the C sharp minor chord. So we only have the root note and the note of the melody on fret 12. Then the B major and the A major. And then the E major played with the fifth on the bass. So we have the note B and the note B on the top B string fret seven. So it's a very simple progression. Now, the way Tarek harmonizes this melody is just mind blowing. With just one more note, he's able to add so much color to the melody. That is just unbelievable. Now for the C sharp minor, he adds another minor third, so it's the same note E, 
played one octave lower on the G string for number nine. For the B major, he adds the E again, which is now the 11th for the B major chord. And then for the A, we have this beautiful F sharp, which is the major sixth. And for the E major, he adds the G sharp, which is the major third. There is something about these chords that sound so beautiful and religious and faithful and holy, but also really sad and melancholic. Then we have... Now this is an F sharp minor chord. But look how he plays the melody. So you have the triad, the F sharp minor triad here on 11, 11 and 10. But then he will play the D string, the E string, the G string, and the B string. So the melody is within the chord. Then we have the E major chord, played with just the fifth and the third. And then this beautiful turnaround. So we have the F sharp major chord, which is basically this chord. We're only playing two strings. And then we have the B7 chord, with the bar chord on the front number two. And then the A and the D sharp. And we finish with the E major. This beautiful A section sounds calm and quiet. It's mainly played with major chords, so it's a beautiful and lovely thing to play. Now the B section is in E minor, and it will take a completely different direction with more minor chords, harmonic tension, and a stronger melody. So we notice right away that the vibe is now completely different. We are in E minor. So the chords that we are going to play are mainly the E minor chord, the A minor, the B7. We're also gonna have this beautiful chord, which is the F sharp minor seven flat five. Also guys, the melody is way more jumpy now. It sounds like this. Now in the first two bars we only play two chords, the E minor. So we start with the, you know, just the root note, the fifth and the third of the chord. And then the B7. Now we're only playing two bars, but you see how many things we are actually playing. Now the E minor is quite straightforward. B7, how beautiful this chord is. Now it's obviously a quite tense chord, it's a dominant chord, and then with the melody, we actually play the flat 13 of this B7, which add way more tension to the chord. And then we finish with the E minor. Now the melody is harmonized in thirds. So the melody is on the G string. But then we add uh, this note at the bottom here on the D string. And we finish with the E 
minor chord with just the open strings. It's such a beautiful section. The melody is then played all the way up to the fret number 12. And then we have this beautiful cadence. Now here we have basically three chords. The A minor chord, played with just two notes. Then we have the F sharp minor 7 flat 5, which is a half diminished chord, which is this one. But we're only playing the root note and the B string fret number 10. And we finish with the B7 chord. Beautiful sounding chord. It's a bar chord on fret number 7 with the major third on the fret number 8. And then the melody on the D string. One thing that I like about this section is that it's so simple to visualize. We start with the fret 7, then 8, then 9, then 10. And we finish with the B7, which is a bar chord. Now, this is definitely, you know, a little bit more challenging than all the other chords. And this is kind of uh, Tarrega style. He can play the whole song with super simple chords and then he will throw in a challenging chord. So obviously if you are a beginner, this chord can drive you crazy. It's a bar chord on fret number 7 with the fret 8 on the G string. Should you lower the thumb and put pressure here with this knuckle. We then finish with this beautiful melody. So it follows the same structure as the major key, but now we are in E minor, so we're going to play it like this. We start the melody with the F sharp though, so the E string fret 2, and then the A minor chord, so we're only going to play the bass note, the A. Beautiful melody. It's kind of pretty easy to memorize. It's quite symmetrical. 10, 8, 7, 10, 8, 7. And then the last cadence, E minor, D7. This is actually a D sharp diminished, but it's played just like a D7 chord. The B7 and the E minor. Lagrima is indeed one of the most beautiful classical pieces ever written. Tarega is also known for writing other beautiful classical pieces. But don't just think about him as a classical guitar player and a composer. He is way more than that. He was able to provide so many beautiful classical pieces to the classical repertoire that it is thanks to composers like him if the classical guitar became so popular. Now I'm going to leave you to practice this beautiful classical piece. Make sure that you take it step by step, guys, okay? Learn one or two measures at a time and then move on to the next thing when you feel ready. Let me know if you like the video in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Enjoy this lesson and have a lovely rest of the day.